Okay, welcome back everybody. I just come out here to do the intro, but today I'm gonna be building, well, I got the fish finder, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be building a portable fish finder unit, battery, everything all, one little container, it's gonna be good. Let's go ahead and check it out. So here is the unit I'm putting, gonna be using, the Helix 7. It's a Gen 3, I didn't need the Gen 4, plus I didn't wanna pay the extra money. I am going to be putting it in this John boat here. Well, it's not going to be permanent, but um, this is the boat that I'm working on. I bought it last fall. I'm getting it the way I want. There's going to be a video on that, but this one's going to be out first. Anyway, back to this video. So I have uh, this friend that this boat's kind of both of our ideas, but he asked me why I'm hanging a chandelier in a haunted house, meaning why am I using such a nice fish finder and such a, you know, basic cheap boat. And that got me thinking, why not just build something that I can use in that boat? I can use in a canoe, I can use in the kayak, another boat, just basically portable, take it anywhere I want. So that's what we're going to do today. So here is the Apache 1800 hard case. Well, basically what I'm going to do, I got some hardware in here. I'm going to mount the fish finder on here like that. I'm going to use this sealant. I got some hardware bolts here I'm going to use. And then inside this box, this is all foam. So, you know, you can see take as much out as you want I'm gonna leave that bottom layer but I ordered I ordered a Dakota lithium battery I think I ordered a Dakota lithium battery it's a 12 volt 10 amp hour phosphate iron battery which I'm not gonna get into that but I learned a lot but there's a difference between phosphate ion and phosphate iron lithium batteries. So if you're gonna use it in a market for a battery, I definitely would check that, look that up on YouTube and watch videos on it. It's pretty interesting. Anyway, so the battery is gonna go in here and then this just peels down like that. Obviously the unit's gonna be mounted up here. I'm gonna have, oh, let's see. I got these little grommets that I'm gonna drill for the power. I'm gonna drill a hole there. And these are just wide enough that it's gonna fit this power cord. So basically this box is gonna keep the unit watertight battery. Everything's gonna be watertight. And then this also came on my boat, a portable transducer mount. Gonna mount the transducer to that. Pretty simple, you know, you just remove it, take it boat to boat. Boat to canoe, you know, kayak, whatever you want, basically. So, this is all new to me. So, if you're wanting a tutorial, probably maybe watch this for ideas. But, again, this is new to me. So, I don't know. Anyway, let's get to building this thing. Okay, now, I'm going to do... I may have to re-drill these, but this box is perfect like this is going to be inside it centers right up on it so what i'm going to do just put a little mark so i know where to drill all right now Okay, so basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this sealant, which it's like really old. And I'm just going to put it in these where I'm going to be. Oh my. One second. 
Okay, and I'm back. As I was saying, this is a really old sealant. It's still good. It's been sealed up. I'm just going to take that and put it down in there. So hopefully when I screw the bolts down in, whoop, a little too much, that's going to take it down in. I don't know how important this step is, but I want to do this just to be sure. And these aren't the bolts. I bought these bolts. They did not come with this. There's just screws. But in my thinking, um, these bolts with a little nut on them and lock washer are going to be much better than, say, just the flimsy screws the finder came with. Okay. Help if I had the drill going the right direction. One. Two. Clean that up. Now. that up that's actually about perfect because so I didn't want I didn't want too much sticking out because there will be foam that goes on top of that but I got these nuts and lock washers All right. All right. Well, after going through literally every single wrench that I had, I found one that hopefully will fit. Okay, so I had to find another wrench because the one I had I thought fit, but apparently it didn't. I'm probably shaking the camera all over for you guys. That sucker's tight. Alright, I'm going to finish this. And we'll move on. Okay. Okay, that's done. Literally, I pulled out all my tiny wrenches I had. And the one that fit was that guy right there. But you can see those are in there. Nice and snug. That's not going anywhere. I'll put this. And that, I mean... That's that's perfect. No, the screws aren't poking through. Aren't going to poke the battery. So that's a good thing. Anyway, get these wrenches put away. And actually, I'm really impressed how that turned out. And that sucker's solid. All right, on to the next step. Okay, so here is the power cord. Which I got to put the connectors on there. But I got these little grommets. And again, I know this... I want it to be watertight, but, you know, that one's on there really good. So that's one we're going to go ahead and use. Close that up. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it so you guys can see first, but I'm going to drill the hole right here for this grommet, which I've never worked with these, so going to be some trial and error, but let's see how it goes. Okay, you see that, now I gotta get this, I don't know, 
it's gonna yeah that's eh, nowhere near big enough all right again trial and error All right, we'll see if that works. The mail's here. Typically, don't do unboxings. Actually, I never have. Um, but this is pretty cool. It's that lithium battery I ordered. So, let's see what it's all about. I did, I ended up going with a Dakota, which you can get cheaper ones, but there is a difference. Um, like, I'll have to find what video and I'll link that, but it explains everything. Oh, good. At least they sent me a sticker. Assuming that's the battery. That's the charger. Let's see. volt 10 amp hour so now this is gonna go into here decent little charger anyway so yeah this battery is going to be in here probably i got to cut the foam the foam inserts but just something like that that's what i'm thinking anyway too tall to stand up yeah so that's that's the way we're going to do that but first we got to feed the power cord through that grommet that i used five minute epoxy on seats good in that grommet so now I gotta figure out something here that's in now we got to figure out get this foam because this foam is pre-cut so that's a you know a good thing so I guess You know, basically you just want it so it's not in there moving all over the place it's kind of sloshing around
and that's that. All I gotta do, put these little crimps on the end of the power cord. That should be ready to go. Probably should plug it in and charge it too. Yeah, that's all it's gonna be like. Just simple. Um, this battery for what it is was pretty pricey. I think this was like, this was 99. But like I said, there's a big difference between the, or not, not just Dakota brand, but the phosphate iron and the phosphate ion. This is a phosphate iron, which has quite a bit of longer life. I'll see if I can find that guy that does the reviews and kind of explains these lithiums in, in depth. It's really interesting because it, it, they advertise 10 amp hours. Usually you're not getting that. This one you will, but other ones that say, oh, 12 amp hour, 10 amp hour, and these fish finders, need uh, they need a certain amount of volts to run and anything under that what i think it's 11.1 .1 with this helix and anything under that it's just you're wasting time You look at that. Yeah, thanks, Helix. I know the transducer is not connected. That's uh, pretty cool. I'm going to get this battery on the charger, and that's the build. And this is the last part of it that um this is that well this is the hummingbird transducer but this is that transducer mount that was on my boat when i got it now what i'm gonna do is probably zip tie that there and i have the extra cable but yeah this is this is gonna be a good setup be able to go canoe boat kayak you know whatever you're in a friend's boat you want to take your own finder there you go and uh i can get uh i can get it has the flasher for ice fishing on this. I think it requires a different transducer, but I'm not sure. But yeah, this is gonna this is gonna work real good. All right, that's it for the fish finder, the portable fish finder build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you took something away from it. Again, first time for me doing this, so I'm sure it could have been better, but it actually it come out better than my own expectations, which it's always a good thing. All right, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.